Discuss legal analyst, former prosecutor David Fleck. Okay, David, so give me your reaction to this, this piece of evidence, how powerful it may be, and does it even matter how these people are behaving after the fact in terms of this incitement of insurrection charge that these House managers are attempting to prove against one individual, the former president? Yeah, well, as a, as a trial lawyer, some of what I'm seeing makes me cringe. Um, in, in no court of law would the statements of a, of a lawyer, of a defense counsel, be admitted as, as evidence. You know, and many defense attorneys will, will say things about, what they're, about their client's thoughts and feelings and try to spin the evidence you know, in their client's favor because none of those statements can be used against their client. If their client, the defendant, were making these statements, all those statements could be used against them in, in court. So uh, defense attorneys typically will do this and, uh, and, and make those statements. But I, I think we have to make one thing clear, that saying Donald Trump made me do it is not a defense to any of these crimes. There, the, right. Each of these individuals who's being prosecuted is responsible for their own actions. Correct. I'm so glad you said that. I, I, we can't emphasize that enough. I, especially a lot of that, I think, is getting lost. So thank you for for making that point, David, that doesn't suddenly absolve someone of criminal responsibility if they say someone else. I mean, no, no, that, that's not how it works. And that's why we're seeing dozens upon dozens of indictments filed against these individuals who did these horrific things on that day. Um, to that point, let's expand it a little further. Um, I would anticipate tomorrow, you know, when I'm thinking about what these defense attorneys are going to argue on the former president's behalf, I would think they're going to argue that those words, the words fight like hell, were a metaphor, not meant to be taken literally. And I, I would hope that would be an important distinction that they would make. And to your point, you can't hold someone else responsible, you know, for what you do. We're all responsible for our own actions. And everyone right. that was involved in this who did something that's criminal can be held accountable. Uh, so your thoughts on, on that, what do you think they need to do in terms of the advocacy they put forth in making sure everyone understands that this was metaphorical speech uh, and not to, meant to be taken literally? Well, first of all, I want to say that I think they really dropped the ball today. Uh, if If the opposing counsel ever ended early and I had a half hour to start making my case to the jury, I would start right then and there because I want the jury, and in this case, the jury really is the American people. I want the jury thinking about my best arguments as they go to sleep tonight. And I want them thinking about those arguments when they wake up first, first thing in the morning. So I think they really missed an op opportunity here. I I'm uh, with but, you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead quickly and then we have to take a break. Go ahead, please, David. Uh, well, I, I just think that um, tomorrow, yes, they will have to focus on these arguments exactly. But again, this is not a court of law. So it's all kind of wishy-washy about what they need to do. And uh, to some extent, they're making it up on the fly. Right. They make up their own rules, like you were telling right. us earlier. There is no burden of proof. What is? I would love to know. Someone please tell me what the burden of proof is. It will make it breaking news here on Court TV Live. David Fleck, great to talk with you. Thank you so much. And thank you for being with us at home. We're going to step aside, take a break. We'll be right back with more coverage here on Court TV.